Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I'm really excited to showcase the platform today that will help with building out planning applications in a fast, effective, smart, and secure way. I know that a lot of us have been on a, you know, several webinars over the years, and uh, most of the time, whenever I'm on a webinar, there's always someone talking through PowerPoint slides. And so my objective today is to focus more on a product demonstration to showcase the process of actually building a planning application from the ground up and really focus our attention on what you can do after you build that planning application to the different functionalities. But like most things, we do want to set the foundation on a few items that we'll talk about today. And we'll have one polling question towards the tail end of the uh, PowerPoint presentation that just will give us an idea of the audience and what type of platform you're using today, specifically for budgeting, planning, and forecasting. So once again, thank you so much for joining today. As a way of introduction, today's agenda is gonna cover some of the key benefits of having all of your planning and actual data within a powerful dashboard engine to help drive decision-making within the organization, as well as challenges that we typically come across when working with clients around making and creation of new dashboards and what that looks like. Examples of dashboards, that's where we're gonna spend a majority of our time today. You're actually gonna see several examples that we'll go through. And then ultimately getting into the meat of the presentation and the webinar, which is really building the application from the ground up. I'm not gonna start with the, you know, the full solution. Uh, what I want to do is I want to showcase all of the interworkings and how a business user can come into the platform, build out their own dimensions, their cubes, and their data models, and connect that to a template that is already predefined as what we call Rapid Result Pack. So I'm really excited to showcase how this works in real life and give you the opportunity of reaching out to Actaris later down the road if this is something that is of interest to you to even start your own journey on creation of a, a planning solution. Just a way of introduction of, of myself. So my name is Mike Zach. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Actaris. Actaris is a planning or XP&A platform that allows users and organizations to centralize all of their data in a single source of truth, all wrapped around the Microsoft ecosystem. And the planning engine is extremely robust, robust providing flexibility such as top-down planning, bottom-up planning, and we service multiple, multiple industries as well as hundreds of organizations worldwide. I have been in this industry, I would say the fintech industry, for most of my career. I actually started in a company at a company called G Treasury, which was a treasury management solution. And then I moved over to a company called Hazeltree, which was a treasury management application for hedge funds and private equity firms. Uh, I really enjoy golfing and skiing. That's really the kind of the things that I do mostly on my uh, time off if, if I am able to get some. And a uh, fun fact about myself, I've actually been to now 45 countries and hopefully going to be able to, to get more uh, as, I, as I get older. So my favorite country, though, if you ever have a chance, I do recommend going to Cambodia. It was absolutely a huge, huge opportunity for me. And just the history, the rich history that is there, definitely recommend you hitting up Cambodia and Vietnam right around that area if you're ever in the Asia Pacific area. With that being said, I wanted to first focus on some ideas and, and benefits of using dashboards to make decisions. I think we're all pretty clear on what dashboards bring an organization, but being able to have a, a unique planning application built inside of the familiar tools that you're already used to is extremely powerful. And the two tools that we're going to talk about today are going to be Power BI and Excel. Both platforms are the user user experience tool that Actaris uses to bring the data to life. Now, what that gives you is three things. One, extreme reduction in time to value, as well as time to learn. At no point in anyone's life do we say that we want things to take longer and receive less value. We also don't say that we want to take all of the time in the world to learn a new platform. We're all humans. We don't like change in the first place. And the current SaaS world forces us to learn new platforms, which is in their best, in their best interest for us to learn their platform, because what that gives them 
is the upper hand, that you're consistently reliant on their technology, but there's always a very deep learning curve to any type of platform. This is a conversion from one ERP system to another ERP system, a CRM tool, or even a planning application. Here at Ecteris, what we want to provide users is the comfort of the tools that they're most familiar with, that being Power BI and Excel as the starting points of today's discussion. Since Excel, has, everyone has been talking about, oh, we're, Excel is going to go away. We don't need to use, no, nobody's going to use Excel. We're going to start using platforms for uh, replacements of Excel. 20, 30 years later, we're all still using Excel for a variety of different reasons. What we want to introduce to the world is a new way of being able to gather data from disparate systems normalize all of that data into a common single source of truth and leverage tools that we already know and love to pull that data from the single source of truth and bring it the data to life which is going to provide that real-time insights and data visualizations now don't get me wrong excel does have its issues you don't have an audit trail no data governance you have limitations for data consolidation purposes and limits in rows among other things that's exactly the problems that we have solved for. We didn't go to the market and say, well, we're trying to fix Excel. Excel is great for a variety of different reasons, and so is Power BI. What we ended up doing was fixing some of the pain points that people have with Excel and Power BI, and that's the product that we're bringing to market and extremely excited to show you today. Not only do dashboards provide that real-time insights, it provides improved efficiencies, you're able to see the data that correlates directly to your job and providing you the right insights. And you have to have the trust as well as a huge component around the data. And it's more about the proactiveness to realizing the data that you're looking at. It's one thing to present data in some format. It's another to tell a story around that data and making it easier to tell a story. And I think Excel and Power BI have the flexibility of creating more of a tailored experience. I can imagine with the over 1,000 people that we have on today's webinar that no spreadsheet is created equal. Everyone's is different, but it's still the same tool. And the reason why we all jump into Excel or Power BI is because of its flexibility and being able to accommodate exactly what we need. Traditional SaaS platforms force you into their traditional design and what they believe is the best best way of looking at things. But in reality, that doesn't fit a lot of organizations that are out there. We have to either get used to not having certain features or not looking, looking a certain way, or we have to go revert back to our, our normal Excel templates because the source system that we purchased or the, the SaaS platform that we purchased just wasn't working for us. Which leads us into some of the challenges of building accurate forecasts. It all comes down to data. Garbage in, garbage out, as the old saying is. The quality of your data is extremely important, and we need to make sure that when we're connecting to your source systems or your systems of record, that that data is flowing into a single source of truth, and you have confidence that the data that's being displayed is correct. We've, we never want to be in a situation when we actually look at a dashboard and the data is incorrect, we have no idea if it's incorrect or not, and we vocalize that internally, and we look like we don't know what we're talking about. We wanna be able to trust the data that is in front of us. And that's why, again, we always revert back to Excel because we know that we've built it in a certain way that we can trust what we've put together. And we can backtrack and trace how that was calculated in the first place. So Excel has all of these great benefits. We just need to be able to enhance it so that way we don't have the, the cons, which is what I mentioned earlier. Trying to integrate to multiple systems is always going to be a nightmare. Now it's getting easier and easier over time with AI and some of the API connections that these companies, these different platforms are, are establishing, but it's still a messy process. When you think about HR, finance, sales, just those three departments, and you want to bring data together to tell a complete story about the business, you're, it's almost like three different languages coming together. There's, there's not a real process to bring the data in and normalize that data in a very fast, effective, and smart way. But we have to get to a point where we can deliver the data in to a single source of truth, normalize all of that data so everyone's working off of the same information and it's telling a complete story where everything is connected. When something happens within HR, it could potentially affect, most likely, finance. Like if we hire a new person, 
Well, hiring a new person is definitely needs to be recorded within the HR platform. But what it also needs to be communicated to is the finance department because they need to then increase their budget for that department and keep track of that going forward. And that's a very simple use case. I mean, it gets a lot more complex than that within a lot of organizations that we work with. But the idea is when you have information coming into a single source of truth, being able to normalize that is what's important. Now, examples of dashboards. We want to be able to make sure that we're developing the right dashboard for our organization. And some key things to think about are what type of KPIs are, are you looking at today? And what type of KPIs would help you make better decisions? That's first and foremost. When we think about workforce planning, being able to analyze employee performance over time, looking at last year versus this year, comparison metrics, and getting instant insights into the data that we're bringing in. And then also being able to provide across the business. It's one thing to look at your data in silos where you have HR, finance, and sales, but it's also to be able to pull all of that information together to tell a complete story of what's going on within the business. It's almost like in our personal lives, if you had three bank accounts and you only brought in one bank account and you're making decisions off of one bank account, that's not the complete story. Yeah, maybe for a few bills here and there, that would make sense, but you're not taking in consideration your 401k account, your mortgage account, that's what's telling the complete story of your finances. It, it should work the exact same way within the business world, except that we're pulling in a lot of additional data and higher volumes of transactions. Now, like I said earlier, I wanted to spend most of our time today focusing on the actual element of building this from scratch. I can sit here and talk all day about best practices, what's important, what are we seeing from clients, of course, that's extremely important, but I don't want to bore the, the audience with PowerPoint. I think we've all seen PowerPoint presentations over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into the process of actually creating our own planning application. And we're going to be able to do so very quickly. So switching gears here to the browser, what I want to start with is the creation of our environment. When we talk about the single source of truth and having all these systems connect into that single source of truth, we need to create that single source of truth. That's what we're gonna do right now. First, we want to outline some key items that are important uh, for the setup of this environment. So first name, last name, and email address. Then we're gonna go ahead and give this a test environment name and the legal name of the company that we're working with, the country that we operate in. In this case, we're gonna use, um, just because we've used this before, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the phone number. And that's fine, we'll just leave that, select an industry, accept, next, next, and finish. So once we go through that, of course, you're gonna wanna put in your, your business information and your email address. What's going to happen is, Actaris is going to send the email that we typed in in the very beginning with an activation code. That activation code is coming from Actaris admin, which I just received here. And I'm going to pull that over for everyone to see. There we go. It's a very simple email. There, here's an activation button. As soon as we click on that activation button directly from that email, it's going to now begin the process of building the entire Actaris platform. Once the platform is designed, then we're going to get into actually creation of all of our dimensions, our cubes, connecting to different data sources, and then ultimately build that planning application. And that's what we're going to end with today is a finished product, but seeing it from the very beginning of creation of the environment, which we put in the hands of our users. We always focus on being self-service. At the end of the day, we don't want to focus too much on external individuals doing this for us, like like providers, software providers, we want to put this in the hands of the user and give them complete control around the setup of their environment, the naming conventions of their environment, and being able to, of course, help along the way. This process right now takes roughly about two minutes or so. What we're doing is we're creating a database for the end user with that's provisioned within the Actaris tenant. We do offer other mechanisms of deploying the database for uh, organizations such as within your environment or on-prem, but today we're gonna to focus this within the Actaris tenant environment. It's also setting up your provisions, so your usernames, uh, setting up the environment for us to create the dimensions and cubes. It's going through a lot of additional functions. 
Now, while that's taking place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a, um, a working document here that we're going to work towards, which is going to encompass all of our dimensions in cubes that we're going to be generating today. So let me go ahead and pull that up for you so you can see what we're going to be looking at. Oh, actually, we'll do that in a second. It looks like we're already done. So very, very quick, set that up. We got another email here that will showcase our username and our temporary password that we're going to go ahead and leverage to log in. Once we click on Open Modeler, it's going to ask us to sign in. Now, I have to log out of my normal environment, so just give me one second while I do that so I can log into the new environment. The great thing about Actaris is that we are fully integrated within the Microsoft ecosystem. So when you log into your Office 365 account, it automatically logs you into Actaris. So let me just log out here. And just bear with me for one more second. Here we go. So we'll go ahead and hit sign in. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these two usernames. Uh, and so we're going to use another account. This is a little pro tip that I've learned and it saved me a lot of time. I don't know if anyone already knows this or not, but when you have something, and this is, has nothing to do with the planning platform, this is purely just a, a Windows feature. When you have multiple things that you wanna copy, you can actually go ahead and copy, let's say my login and my temporary password. I've copied both of those instances. Now, what I can do is I can hit the Windows key and the V button, V as in Victor, and that's going to pull up a library of all the things that I've copied over a period of time. So in this case, we're going to focus on these two things. So I, the username, I'm going to go ahead and paste that there. And instead of me going back and copying something else, I'm just going to hit Windows V one more time. And I'm going to paste the temporary password and go ahead and hit sign in. So it's all about creating a more seamless, in, seamless um, interaction with the onboarding process, which is what we try to strive for. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit sign in. Now it's going to ask me to change my password. So I'm going to go ahead and do so here. And this is purely for security reasons. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit sign in. Normally, when you create the Actaris platform on your own, we would suggest that you leverage MFA, multi-factor authentication. For today's purpose, I'm going to go ahead and skip this step, but you are required after 14 days to enable MFA, and that is to protect data, your data even more than it already is protected. Great, so it's that easy. We created our the entire environment that we're gonna use all day today within the matter of less than five minutes. What we've done within the modeler, this is the heart and soul of the platform. This is the planning engine. This is where users can create their dimensions, their cubes, they can connect to their different data sources all in one place. We have a tutorial that walks individuals through uh, what the Actaris platform is utilizing, the three key pillars that we focus on. Again, information related to the database that we just created, and we can select a source system that we want to be able to pull in to the, uh, to the environment. So, for example, maybe we're using Oracle, SAP, Workday, Salesforce, ADP, Dayforce, all these different platforms that I'm sure you use on a day-to-day -day basis. All of those can be connected into the Actaris modeler and that's what we're going to start with today once we get to a point of being able to focus on the development of our planning application again we're not there's no coding involved in this entire process it's purely all web based and also excel and power bi based which we will talk about as the finishing touches when we get into the finishing touches of the demonstration just to give you a little bit of a tutorial here, we have the Actaris modeler, which is where we're gonna create all of our dimensions in cubes as part of our planning application. We have the Actaris hub, which is a mechanism of bringing in multiple data sources. We have Actaris apps, so pre-built connectors through APIs. We have the admin section, being able to uh, add additional um, database IP addresses and manage user access rights, manage your subscription, and of course you have your help center which is getting started uh, going back to that original screen that we saw earlier going into our wiki page downloading of certain visuals and also getting access to our support team if required all of that is in one single application now let's get to the fun part which is actually developing and building the planning application now i'm going to pull up our list of dimensions now the source system that we're going to talk about today is going to be excel 
that's where this information is coming from. However, most of the clients that we have, and as well as I'm sure all the people that we have on the call today, your source system is gonna be your ERP, your CRM, your HRIS system. We're gonna pull all of the dimensions and fact table information into the Actaris database that we just created today automatically. But today I wanted to focus on how to build this from scratch. So if you have this in a Excel template and you wanna be able to model this really quickly, you definitely can. There's multiple dimensions that we're gonna to create today. First dimension that is typically automatically created is the date dimension. Then we have different job titles for HR planning. We have different incentive components as part of HR planning, like bonuses and compensation, different scenarios. When we think about planning, we're gonna always have our actual scenario, but on top of that, we're gonna have our budget, our forecast, our plan, whatever naming convention that we wanna be able to create. We have certain employees that we wanna break down for reporting purposes, so full-time versus part-time employees, different cost centers that we wanna look at, and of course, the meat of the reporting is always going to be done at the GL account level. So we'll be able to see these are all the accounts that we have. They're tied to expenses or the PL balance sheet or cash flow statement. And then how ultimately how we're grouping those within the report. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take all of these dimensions, which are typically in your source system already, and where we would automatically pull it in from there, we're going to load this in manually. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we're going to start with our first dimension. So let me just go into real quick here. Our first dimension today is going to be the expense dimension. So let's start there. It's very easy to create a new dimension. All we need to do is go in and specify the name of that dimension. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this over and select this plus sign here. This is how easy it is to create a brand new dimension. So we're gonna create our accounts dimension. It's gonna reference that Excel template that we just uh, looked at earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that from my list here, so my dimensions. And you'll notice that we have a variety of different tabs within that Excel report. This, we're gonna to link to our accounts table and we're gonna go ahead and hit create. So what we're doing is we're loading in all of those accounts that we saw within that Excel template instantly within Actaris. So it's now created that same list that we saw in Excel, but standardizing it within a structured database. We, of course, on this page can edit data. So if there's additional information that we wanna add, like new columns or new rows or modify anything that was imported by mistake, we certainly can do so in this very user-friendly interface. Once we click on save, everything gets saved back to the database and instantly is available to any user that has access to that data. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a variety of other dimensions that are important in the data model that we'll wanna create. So I'm gonna go through and create the next one here. And we're gonna have this one as our cost center. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and select that Excel file. I'm gonna select and map this dimension to our cost center page. And once again, hit create. It's gonna load in all of the records associated with my cost centers. And you can see over on the left-hand side now, oops, you can see we have a list of all of our cost centers. So that's the second dimension that we've created. Now I'm gonna create a few more. Next one is gonna be our date dimension. So let me click that, select our date. Everything looks good, hit create. Then we wanna go ahead and create our employee dimension. So we're going through and just updating and connecting the data and importing it as a one-time import into Actaris. So now we can start leveraging that when we create the data model. So just three more. That way we can have a complete PL balance sheet and rest, uh, roster headcount planning platform by doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and specify the incentives. Then we have our job titles that we wanna be able to import. Select that again. And this is for our job titles. And last but not least, one of the most important dimensions in your data model is gonna be the scenario. Scenario will capture your actual data, which is always locked down and never touched. Then you're gonna have your budget, your plan, your forecast, 
that is what's important for uh, additional verification on variance analysis. And you'll see that later today when we get into the completed version of the planning application. So it's that easy. We've just created all of our dimensions that we wanna now use within our planning application. The second step after you've created your dimensions is to connect these dimensions together in a data model. Now, normally you have to create a data model within Excel or Power BI directly. Actaris makes it very easy where you don't actually have to understand the creation of data models. We actually identify all of the different nuances and IDs and what are known as keys automatically. So to create a cube, and let me go ahead and just, um, we're gonna create several of them today. We're gonna first create the, uh, a cube by giving this a name of expense. And we're gonna go ahead and select our dimensions that we wanna create. So we'll do cost center, we'll do scenario, we'll do our GL accounts and we'll do our dates and we can go ahead and create. So we've now just created a data model. And this is a star schema data model, meaning that we have all of our dimensions that are linked to a fact table that we're gonna load data into. That's gonna be the last step before we get into the actual template where the end user is gonna spend the majority of their time when it comes to planning, reporting, and analytics. Right now, we're just setting up the actual foundation. When we look at systems, and I do this um, as well, when we're looking at new applications internally um, for whatever purpose, let's say for sales, we typically see the best of the best demo. We don't ever see how how is how was that demo actually created, and it's a it's a it's a valid question because it took probably a long time to get to what we're actually seeing on the screen. And what we want to do is we want to flip the script. We want to show you how easy it is to build the ground from the ground up, and then focus on the analytics because it's important to understand the journey of getting to the end result, which is all what we're all looking for. But we have to understand the journey and how we get there. And that's what we're going through right now. By creating our dimensions, by creating our cubes, we're actually generating the data models that are gonna be linked to a rapid result pack that we've created specifically for finance, HR, and sales. Let's go through and create a few more. So I'm gonna create uh, my secondary, oh, my head count, excuse me. Let me go ahead and create my head count view. This is gonna be important for HR planning. And this is gonna take our job titles into consideration incentive periods, employees, and uh, we wanna be able to slice and dice that by cost center, scenario, because you're gonna wanna be able to do this for multiple scenarios as well as dates. And we're gonna go ahead and create one more, which is gonna be related specifically to our bonuses. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and select again all of the information that we need incentives oh, actually my apologies let me go ahead and uh create one more here actually so this will be important and how we want to slice and dice on the balance sheet because i want to show a complete view of not only just a p l but i want to show also a balance sheet today so let's select the scenario and then let's go for the date here good we have headcount, and then we'll get into salary next. So it's all of our salary components, which are going to be sliced and diced by job title, by incentive. Uh, let's do this by employee, make sure that looks good. Okay, cost center, again, scenario, and date. And then last one, we want to focus on our target bonuses. This will be the last cube that we'll create today. And this one's gonna just take into consideration job title, incentive periods, and our employee. And we don't need data on that. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've set up our dimensions. We set up our cubes, no smoke and mirrors here. I'm doing all of this live within the system. Once you're done with your dimensions and your cubes, now it's time to load data. Once again, your data is gonna most likely come from a source system. When we say data, what we're talking about is the actual amounts that we're gonna be feeding. These are salary amounts, these are uh, GL amounts, anything that you wanna be able to report on from a factual standpoint. But you can see here we have our DIM accounts, our DIM dates, 
our actual scenario and the amount associated with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import all of this into the platform. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one more thing to make this easier. Sometimes it's pretty, you're never gonna have a situation like I do where you have multiple iterations of the same system and multiple logins. Normally you're just gonna have one login, but since we're doing this separately, I have multiple ones. So we call this the webinar. Okay, go ahead and select that. All right. When you go into Excel, in the add-on section here, you can go ahead and type in Actaris and download our Excel add-in. This is extremely powerful, not only for just loading in data to the dimensions and cubes that we just talked about, it's also great when you get into the planning and budgeting and forecasting side. Now, I already have the Excel add-in downloaded here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. Now notice that we're signing in with our Office 365 account. So it's not additional username, it's not an additional password. This is seamlessly integrated within your existing infrastructure. We have our webinar test. That's the database that we created today that we're gonna be uploading data into. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with our expense first, and we're gonna go ahead and hit bulk upload. So we now have just uploaded really, really quickly 23, roughly 2,300 transactions as it relates to our expenses. Now we're gonna go next to our target bonuses. So what are our bonus percentages that we have for different job titles? And do we have different bonus percentages for actual versus budget? And we can set that up and then we can compare that side by side. Do we have bonus percentages that are different for full-time employees? Is there a commission versus bonuses? So all of this is part of that dimensionality that we created earlier. So what I wanna do now is I wanna be able to load in this predefined list. So I'm gonna select down here our target bonuses and I'm gonna go ahead and hit bulk upload. Okay, we've already successfully uploaded that. Now I'm gonna go into my headcount. So we wanna be able to understand what is our total headcount by department, by job title, or in this case, cost center, excuse me, not department, same concept. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select our headcount cube that we created and we're gonna go ahead and bulk upload the data. Same thing for salaries. What is the salary amount for each individual? What's the actual salary amount? If we scroll down, what is the budget salary amount for each individual? Are these can tied to bonuses or commission or is it salary? Are they full-time employees and what's their actual position or cost center that they belong to? These are all different ways that we'll be able to slice and dice this. So now we're gonna go ahead and select our salary and we're gonna go ahead and hit bulk upload. And last but not least, we wanna be able to look at all of our individual transactions across the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statements. That'll be the last thing here. Before I upload this, I just wanna scroll all the way to the bottom. Here we're loading in 30, roughly 31,800 transactions. You'll see how quick this is. We'll have, we'll have to count this down. So I'm gonna click on the button now. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds to load in 31,000 transactions. When we start to connect to your source systems, all of this is completely automated. Of course, it's hard to do a webinar and just say, I click a button, everything is done. You wanna see how that gets done. And that's what the objective of today's call is, is really to focus on how easy it is for users to build this from the, from the ground up. And that means creating all of all my data models, loading in my data, if you have your source systems, it's a lot easier. So if you're using SAP, Oracle, Workday, NetSuite, Business Central, any of these platforms, we can do instant connections and bring all of this data in for you as part of the implementation, but just wanted to show at least how easy it is to do from Excel. So we are done with this Excel template. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of it. Now we are also done with our model. We don't need any more. Now, of course, we can come in and we can manage access rights. What do people have access to within the system? We can also uh, purchase additional subscriptions, manage users. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and transition over to the rapid result pack that we have. Now, this rapid result pack, if I just make one modification here, change this to our webinar database, there we go. The rapid result packs that we have are pre-packaged solutions that allow users to get a jump start into their project. Right now we're in Power BI. If you want access to a variety of their other rapid result packs, what I encourage everyone to do is go to our website, hectaris.com, 
In the solutions panel, you'll see that we have something called wrapper result packs. Here are all of the prepackaged solutions and we're releasing many of them on a, on a weekly basis. But we have ones for government contractors, hospitality, ESG, depends on what business problem you're solving for that aligns to one of these wrapper result packs. And you can download these wrapper result packs, use this as a starting point, and then once you build your dimensions, your cubes, you'll instantly be able to see that as well. But let's go back to the wrapper result pack that we're going to talk about today, which is specifically related to the PL, the balance sheet, and HR. By clicking on this edit button here, this is going to enter into edit mode when it, as it relates to Power BI. So this is Power BI that we're in right now. This is the front end user experience tool that we have leveraged that is connected to the webinar database that we created today. You'll notice that we have a variety of different visuals over here on the right hand side of your screen in, in a teal like color. These are all the Actaris visuals. Now, if you're familiar with Power BI, then what I want to be able to, to emphasize is that Power BI historically has always been known as a read-only mechanism. It pulls data from different sources and allows you to visualize that data. What it doesn't allow you to do out of the box is interact with that data from a write-back standpoint. For example, if I wanted to increase my revenue by 10%, I can't enter that number, that increase in Power BI normally. With Actaris, this is where you can do that. And that's where budgeting, planning, and forecasting come into play because that's a big component is the input ability of your data. And so our visuals allow users now to input directly in Power BI or Excel, which then writes back through our planning engine to the database that we created today. So you can leverage Power BI and you can still leverage Excel, but the idea is the database is that single source of truth, keeping everyone honest to trust the data as well as to create the audit trail and all the governance that goes along with that. Now I'm gonna go into full screen and start with this top level page, really a basic navigation of the solution that we have created. So what we have done today, just as a recap, we've created our dimensions, we've created our cubes, we've loaded data into those cubes, which a cube is a data model. We've connected that environment to this rapid result template. And is now this is what's bringing the data to life. We can track PL KPIs, balance sheet KPIs. So right now we're toggled on balance sheet, highlighted in this blue color. We can see assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. We can also compare total assets versus prior year assets and what the delta is there. We can toggle here to our PL KPIs. And we can also select the year that we want to look at this information. So if we wanted to, to track this by uh, 2023, or we wanted to change the scenario, we can go ahead and select that as well. So here's our actual scenario, and we can then um, look at budget scenario, forecast scenario, or any other scenario that we've created today. Remember, the scenario was a dimension where we preloaded a subset of scenarios already. And then, of course, the year is another date, is another dimension within the data model. So it's hopefully you start to see all of this kind of coming together now that you've seen how it's built behind the scenes. Let's start with the PL statement. Now, this is Power BI. Any look and feel that you like or dislike can be completely changed. The beauty of Excel and Power BI is that we can control the user interface. It's not like going to Salesforce, and I don't mean to pick on them, it's a great, great company. Um, but like any SaaS platform, if we go to that, like Salesforce in our example, and you ask them to change their UI, well, most likely they're not going to, because that means they have to change it for every single one of their customers, and that increases the learning curve of the technology, and it's just going to add a huge burden. We are coming at this in a completely different angle by saying, okay, let's use these flexible tools that people are already used to and give them a more tailored experience for the planning application. At the top, what we have organized is looking at this by revenue, by gross margin, COGS, operating costs, and net income. So these are our top level KPIs that are related to the PL. We have selected year 2023, as well as we're looking at our budget scenario. In the middle section, we have our waterfall breaking down gross profit and net profit side by side from one another. So we can see the makeup and the what's being taken out of gross profit or net profit and what is feeding gross profit and net profit from a negative or positive standpoint. 
And then down below, we have a very detailed PL statement that is organized by month. If you look at things by quarter, you look at it by year, you look at over 10 year time horizon, all of those things can be instantly accommodated. Over on the left hand side, we have our basic navigation. So right now we're in our PL statement. We will go later into our balance sheet, headcount roster, as well as add scenario. A really cool thing that Power BI offers is being able to embed videos or GIFs within the tool. What this does is it allows for all of our implementations that we have conducted and will conduct in the future, we always build custom training documents. So that way everyone within the organization knows exactly how this was built as well as how to utilize it on an ongoing basis. This is helps with turnover if that ever occurs within the organization. You have a, a, a full-fledged document as well as being able to have videos like this and tutorials explaining to people how to use the product in the first place. So customized and tailored experiences. If I wanted to change any filter on this report, I can cl click on this filter menu, and this is where I'll be able to select my year, my month, and my scenario. As earlier we demonstrated, we're looking at budget in 2023. If I wanted to switch this to actual or forecast, I can certainly do so. Close out the window and come back to the main report. Now it doesn't stop there. Planning, part of planning is about the analytics, being able to see the data in an in a impactful way and tell a story around that data. The second part is where you're starting to enter data, collect data from various stakeholders, simulate what you believe is going to happen, and you want to be able to directly see the impact in the same reports that you're working with. What I can do is I can click on this edit button here which once again is taking all of our KPIs across the top. But what you'll notice as a difference is in the body of this report. This is the uh, Actaris visuals that we were talking about earlier. The Actaris visuals that can be downloaded directly from the Microsoft App Source allow you now to directly enter data into Power BI, and we'll get into Excel a little bit later. And why that's important is because when you are going through your budgeting process, you want to be able to, to see the information in a way that is meaningful to you, as well as you want to be able to enter data and see those changes. Let's see it in action. I'm going to just focus on my revenue for a second here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this edit button. So this is a Power BI visual that Actaris has developed. When I click on this edit button here, it's now turning my budget data into edit mode. Now I have rights to everything. That's why I'm being able to edit anything that you see today. You can restrict all of this within Actaris as well. And I wanna be able to change our product revenue. So for the first two months, you can see it's 1.5 and then it drops dramatically after that. I wanna go ahead and correct it because that's inaccurate. I actually wanna change this now to 1 million. And there's a variety of different shortcuts. So I can type in R1M, which means I'm gonna write that value to the end of the period. There's things like I 10%, which is going to increase this value, the original value, by 10%. Or we can use things like B 25%, which is going to decrease the original value, which was 5,000, by 25%. All kinds of flexibility. Same thing, you can go down a row and you can say, okay, increase this value by 10%. You know, increase this one by 25%. All of these functions are available to you in the upper right-hand corner of the visual. And there's a variety of other ones that we won't be able to showcase today just for time, which I'm cognizant of, we have about 14 minutes left. But the, here, the big thing here is when I click on this save button here, what the system is going to do is it's going to change or write back the data and it's going to change all of the graphs. So keep your eye on the revenue chart here and the way that it looks. What we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to see how this adjusts the information. Now I have this turned off, but we do have automatic um, refresh. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this manually and you're gonna see all of those changes. Oh, sorry, I didn't, oh, there we go, there we go. So we can see all the changes that have now occurred when we made those data entries. Here in the upper right-hand corner of the visual, we can now toggle on our cost center. So maybe I wanna do this for finance or HR or engineering, that's up to you. But ultimately, let's see that one more time. Let's do a dramatic increase. Let's go for January here. And oops, sorry, need to, to click on uh, the edit mode. So we're just going to focus on January here. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to, let me just uncheck that real quick here. There we go. 
we want to be able to now increase this instead of 1.5 million. Let's say we want to put this to 3 million. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save once again. And once that data gets saved back to the database, notice in one second, you'll know, you'll see that the revenue significantly increased here and recalculated everything else. So that's one way that you can enter data directly into Power BI and see the impact that it has on all of the different analysis and metrics that you're keeping track of. The next way. Some of our clients like to change data visually. Now it's important that you can still change data in a more of a matrix style view, but down here we have our second visual of the day, which is called the visual plan. If I wanted to modify data visually, like for example, we have the month of December here at the end at 71,000, which this is related to our cost of goods sold. So our cost of goods sold is significantly lower than the rest, it drops. And that's what we're looking at here. Let's say that that's inaccurate for our budget and we wanna go ahead and drag this chart up to 146. Now, when we hit save, it's gonna write though that data back to the database. And this might affect multiple, multiple records within the system. And you can see that it instantly updated our visualization to now reflect the closer line to the previous month being November. So extremely powerful of being able to edit data, plan, in Power BI, have that data right back to the system that we created from scratch so you can start to see how all of this pieces together. We can hit the go back button and we can then start to analyze the data and, and all the analytics that we have generated off of that, including our KPIs here at the top, our waterfall charts here in the middle, and then of course our PL statement down below. Let's go into the balance sheet view here by clicking on the navigation. Same concept as the PL, obviously different data where we're tracking assets, liabilities, owner's equity. We're looking at the current ratio or any other calculation. So if you wanted to track your you know, debt to asset ratio, we can go ahead and click on that. This will automatically refresh, now show that metric. We can then change this to our, let's say, um, fixed uh, net fixed asset. And we wanna be able to see total across that period of time. We also, can bring in actual data side by side. Right now, um, we are we can look at budget data if we wanted to, or actual data, whatever that may be, based on the filtering mechanism that I showed earlier. Just like the PL, we can go into edit mode here, and we can go ahead and edit data based on the planning scenario that we're trying to create. Maybe there's a new asset that we want to create. Maybe there's an existing asset that we want to be able to change. We can do that through the matrix visual. We can also do that through this table edit visual here. Now, just for time purposes, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the last topic, which is going to be headcount roster planning. Just like PL, just like balance sheet, just like any other use case that you may come across within the planning world, you want to be able to see the information that is the most important. So for headcount planning, we can see here's the total number of employees that we have. Here's how many departments that those employees are allocated to. Here's the average salary. Here's the average bonus, part-time, full-time. So you can start to see this is the data that we imported, right? We imported all of these different job positions. We imported the, um, the bonus percentages across multiple cost centers. We have part-time and full-time, which is a slice and dice mechanism that we added in our dimension. So if we wanted to click on full-time, or we wanted to click on part-time and we wanted to analyze the differences between those. That's the beauty of Power BI is that it's a very flexible reporting engine to get the information out quickly. Just like before, we can go into edit mode within this Power BI report, which is gonna allow us to now plan for headcount. How many people are we gonna be hiring as it relates to certain roles within the organization? Uh, are there new roles that we're going to be introducing and we want to be able to assign them to a specific category? Is there a new department that we're introducing that we want to be able to add? So what we can do here is use our table edit visual. I'm going to call this the mic department. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. I've now just created a new department and watch the number of departments is now goes, goes up to 12. So originally it was 11, now it's 12 because we created that new department called mic. If we wanted to now plan the salary of an employee within the mic department or the bonus associated with the, the individual for the mic department, that's where the matrix visual or the visual planner comes into play. Another one that you probably have seen here in the bottom right corner is our copy visual. 
sometimes we get to a point where last year's budget was pretty accurate and we liked the way that we forecasted that and we want to be able to take a copy of that information and we want to put it into this year's budget as a starting point and then make some minor tweaks and modifications this is going to this visual here is going to allow you to actually gather all of that information paste it into the current budget year and have that as a starting point distribute those out to the team members for them to fill in and adjust the numbers and then have a workflow tied to that so with the seven minutes that i have left i wanted to position this within excel not only can you use actaris with power bi you can also leverage excel to pull in the same information to go through the same planning process pulling in that excel online add-in which is the one we used earlier to do a bulk upload. Now we're gonna, now that all the data is in the system, now we wanna start to create reports off of that. So I'm gonna first start off with the ability to edit dimensions. So I'm gonna go into my edit dimension category here, and I'm going to pull in um, our cost centers. I'm gonna load that into the report. Actually, let me do this first. I think we're gonna actually pull in our job titles here we go so we have now all of the list all of our job titles we can pull in a list of our um, you know cost centers our counts our dates our employees whatever we want to be able to add so there's part-time and full-time anything that you want to be able to pull directly from the database you can pull into excel and further manipulate an example so we can see this in real time I'm going to go back into my cost center here and I'm going to load that into my Excel template. I want to create a new cost center. Let's say this is going to be the 11th cost center. And once again, I'm just going to call this Mike. Of course, this doesn't make any sense, but the idea is I want to show how we're doing this in real time. There is no smoke and mirrors. I'm going to go ahead and save that from Excel. It's going to import that into my database. Now, if I go back to my Power BI report for a second, and I can see here my uh, cost center information. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly hit refresh. You're going to be able to see now there's that mic. Let's show that one more time. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and create the 12th one. And you're going to name this something else. So all of this, updating your dimension data directly within Excel. So this could be used for master data management, keeping everything in one single source of truth. But more importantly, when we think about planning, it's not just take changing dimensions. That's a part of the planning process as you enter in new employees and, and single dimension data. But what we want to be able to do next is we want to be able to create a pivot table. We have the Actaris pivot table, which is going to allow me to create any type of report that I want within Power BI using Actaris functions. So for example, we have the expense view here and we're in our dimension of accounts. And we want to go ahead and bring in our account name in the rows. And you can see here, those are all of the accounts that we were talking that we loaded in today. We can do a different grouping. Maybe there's an account group that we want to focus on, like just let's say revenue. Now we want to be able to add in our columns our date structure. So let's go ahead and look at this by month. Let me just see where I have that here. Oh, there we go. Oop, not filter, column, sorry. So we can go ahead and pull in all of the months. Maybe we only want to select select you know, a few months out of the year. Let's say we want to do January, February, and December, because December is what we were changing earlier. And we want to filter this by our scenario. So let's look at our budget scenario. And I can go ahead and hit Create Grid. What this is doing is it's going back to the database and it's pulling that data into our Power BI or our Excel report, which I can now drill down into to just look at my revenue numbers. And you can see there's December, there's that revenue, those are the revenue numbers that we just entered into the system earlier that increased significantly. We could do the same thing for cost of goods sold. Um, you can come in and you can modify this if you wanted to. So clicking on pivot grid, and now let's say, oh, okay, I want to go ahead and bring in not just my revenue. Now I want to bring in my COGS. And I'm going to go ahead and hit recreate, update. Now we have revenue and COGS. We can expand our revenue. We can expand our COGS. And we can see all of that information all in one place. 
What's great about the Excel version and using Actaris functions is that I can go ahead and I can insert my own columns. I can insert my own rows. And notice how the data is still is staying the same because it knows the intersection of the data that it's referencing. It knows that this data is coming from this dimension, which is our um, account dimension. It's coming from this date dimension and it's coming from this scenario dimension. So it knows the intersection of the data. That's why you can create your own type of reports and be able to build out the exact same format that you're already used to today. You can create your own custom formulas like total and then do a sum total here. Oops. Calculate that. Then I want to be able to bring that all the way across. And it does everything automatically. So you're getting the benefits of leveraging Excel and all of the features, spark lines, charts, if you wanted to. So all the recommended charts that you have, all of these features you can continue to use as you do today. We're bringing a more structure to that environment so that way you have this in a single source of truth, which is the database that we created. It adheres to a model that is constructed specifically for that data source. And now you can bring the data into Excel, play around with it in any way, shape or form, customize the reports in any way that you want. And I'm gonna show one more example here um, because we have a really cool report and unfortunately we won't be able to go into too much details, but I wanna show you more of a finished product and we have this as for revenue analysis. So this is still Excel, but over here on the right, this is the Actaris pivot grid that we just created within the earlier Excel template. It's just taking multiple pivot grids together. In this case, we're looking at quantity, price to then calculate revenue, but you're putting it all into one the same spreadsheet. But if you're interested in what you've seen today, and I know we have a minute left here, we would love an opportunity to work with you on taking your current Excel spreadsheets that you're using potentially for planning, either convert them into Power BI or convert them back into more of an Excel-like experience, and we can do it very quickly. Just by today, within 15 minutes or less, we were able to create the environment, create our dimensions, put this into Excel and start designing that report and focus our attention more on providing value, reducing the time to learn a system, significantly and also reducing the number of systems that you have to leverage and log into nobody likes to log into 12 different systems every single day with actaris we're not just being able to do your finance planning your hr planning your sales planning this could be production planning anything that helps you prepare the business for the future actaris can certainly help with so with that being said let me just go to the last slide here if you do want to get in contact with actaris or you do want to start a free trial with Actaris, please feel free to reach out to us at sales at actaris.com. I hope you found today's uh, demo and, and webinar beneficial. It's very different. I want to take a completely different approach of actually building this in front of you live to show how easy it is to do so. But if you want to learn a little bit more or you want some more information, you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for your time today. Really excited to hopefully meet a lot of you in the near future. Have a wonderful rest of your day.